Hello, my name is Cal Molinay from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And I'm Krieger, I'm an anarcho-technologist. And we're part of the resistance here in Richmond. And of course, today we're going to bring you the news from underground. But before we do that, I'd like to talk about uh, Krieger, our local friendly scientist. <laughs> um, my, my main goal in this is to provide freedom. Freedom of information, freedom of life, freedom to do anything and everything. No one deserves to impose their will on someone else, on someone else's will. Everyone is free to do as they, he or she may please. Yeah, and uh, what, why do you have this, uh, I guess, area of interest in mathematics or computer science? Uh -huh. Why that area? Of, uh... Because the, the space that is allowed within computational science, the infinite possibilities that you can predict in math, shape and is the underlying factor that is the structure of life. In essence, math, pure math, is the absolute freedom that we crave. This freedom to do and to think in a purely symbolic nature, in, the, in a system without restrictions, is that freedom. So I guess it would be safe to say you're very much into the Bitcoin stuff too, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love, I, I love going into the algorithms and looking at what I can do with those things. Cool, cool. Um, and this is our also Bit uh, go-to Bitcoin guy here in Richmond. So any questions, any uh, concerns, uh, well, this, he has a lot of, uh, I guess, wealth of knowledge in there in regards to, uh, I guess, the te technology aspect of the side of that. Yeah, if you, want, if you want to set up a system so that you can automatically trade, or if you want to set up systems so that you can mine Bitcoin and uh, look information for that, definitely ask questions. I'm also into a lot of cybersecurity related topics, uh, including cyber espionage and data security. And of course, any fun mathematical uh, problem that we want to tackle. Yeah. So this is Krieger, and he'll be co-hosting with me uh, for quite some time to come uh, throughout the years ahead. And so let's begin with the news from underground. Now, this is a story regarding uh, CIA spying on a Senate uh, oversight hearing on the CIA itself. <laughs> um, so it's like spy versus spy. Uh, so a behind the scene battle behind the CIA and Congress erupted in public view Tuesday as the head of the Senate Intelligence Committee accused the agency of breaking laws and breaching constitutional principles, an alleged effort to undermine the panel's multi-year investigation of a controversial interrogation program. Uh, so of course, you know, breaching constitutional principles, but that's what they do best. You know, the CIA has been doing that all, well over the 20th century and particular in its um, ways of uh, overthrowing many of, uh, I guess, the leaders of many countries. Well, I guess they're all political rulers, so it doesn't matter, but still yet they install their own um, violent version of those political rulers to, uh, to the extreme. Many of the, uh, I guess, extreme totalitarians in uh, South America came to existence because of the CIA support. Uh, and right now, I'm pretty sure they're out there in uh, Ukraine right now, causing a lot of, uh, I guess, intrigue occurring there in between Russia, too. So Senator Dianne Feinstein, a Democrat from California, accused the CIA of secretly removing documents, searching committing use computers, and attempting to intimidate congressional investigators by requesting an FBI probe over their conduct. Uh, very much spy versus spy. So unless they're a way to intimidate the, the agents, the people who are investigating. Uh, I mean, of course, you know, the, the FBI or, I mean, the CIA would be the last per people, I guess, in, in the role of politics who want to cross, because I'm pretty sure they have a file database on every single person and, well, and, and as regards to their activities and, of course, politicians, political rulers are one of the foremost people you would want to keep tabs on. Um, in the event that they ever double cross you, in the event they try to pull away some uh, grant programs from you, uh, you have different pressure points that you can apply to make sure that they don't uh, well, go it's, against you. It's actually kind of funny, I find it, because the CAA is only supposed to act or do actions that are outside of, domest of domestic scope. Right. And the FBI is every it handles everything that's regard to investigation that is domestic. So when the CAA can't get these, these analysts to go away, they call their buddies in the FBI and be like, hey, we got a domestic issue we want you to do. Yeah. Go harass these guys. And that's exactly what's happened. That's exactly what's happened. Um, so the charges that the CIA director, John O'Brennan, disputed vigorously within hours of Frankenstein's extraordinary appearance on the Senate floor. The dueling claims exposed levels of bitterness 
and distrust that have soared as the community nears completion of a 6,000 page report that expected to serve as a scathing historical report of the agency's use of waterboarding and other brutal interrogation methods on terrorism of suspects held in secret CIA presence overseas after the September 11 attacks. Um, don't forget, 420. Uh, the CIA and the committee are at odds over many of the report's conclusion about the effectiveness of the interrogation program, but are battling public, publicly primary over frictions that surfaced during the probe. Uh, so this is where I guess, uh, I guess a lot of novella-like uh, interests coming out of through here. Feinstein, Feinstein implied that the CIA sabotaged the committee's efforts from the outset, loading a massive amount of files on computer with no index, structure, or ability to search. It was a true document dump, Feinstein said. So they have their tricks, they have their ways to kind of combat this. I guess their own little, um, not DIS uh, service denial, but just... It's, it's a way of, okay, you want some information? Here, have everything, but this is... Good luck just, putting the pieces good, together. Good luck putting it together. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a classic, oh, you, you, want, you, want a pro you want a problem? You want something to do? Here, go... go. Go fix this five fifty thousand piece puzzle. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of funny. Anyway, um, go for it. Okay. So Feinstein, Feinstein said that the review documents were identified using the search tool provided by the CA, but was careful not to say precisely how they were obtained. We don't know whether the documents were provided intentionally by the CIA, unintentionally by the CIA, or intentionally by a whistleblower. This is pretty cool. I guess very clever if it was intentional because then you can find that the CIA set this up to begin with. Um, so of course, it's their way to create a, um, not a false flag, I guess, in, in that word of the sense, but a way to trick uh, the Senate investigators to stumbling onto these documents so they can now have an excuse to get the FBI to investigate and intimidate and harass them. So, very clever uh, chess move on their part. Feinstein expressed outrage that the CIA referred the matter to the FBI. There, she says, there is no legitimate reason to allege the Justice Department that Senate staff may have committed a crime. <laughs> Feinstein said, describing the move as a potential effort to intimidate this staff, and I am not taking it lightly. So, what the CIA is essentially trying to do is, if they planted that data, and allow them to have access to it, it makes it look, or it can make it look like the staffers who are doing the analysis on these documents might have hacked it, might have gained un unprivileged access or gained privileged access to something they weren't authorized to do so. What do they have to hide though, right? If you're not doing anything wrong, what do you have to hide? <laughs> it's not, but of course they get to, I find it funny that they love to use this card when they give, the, they give themselves access, not not even just digitally. They'll they're breaking the people's houses abroad and infringe on your rights. There's no privacy there. Who cares? They don't even know the meaning of the word, uh, and their meaning of the word has exceptions. And they have exceptions. They're just their preferences that uh, that that have the exceptions to political rulers to the political connected. They view, I guess, in terms of animal form, um, I guess, in the, that everyone's equal except for us. You know, we're more equal than others. And that's the position that the CIA and FBI and pretty much uh, everyone in the entire political positions uh, view you, the rest of everyone else, lower than them. Feinstein, who has been a staunch supporter of the CIA programs, included its drone campaign, said the, er the agency must have violated Fourth Amendment protections against unreasonable searches as well as laws against domestic surveillance. So you think that Feinstein's are uh, your white knight, but actually she's, she's also in favor of these drone programs, many of which, of course, overseas has murdered many children. Uh, families, will, it's, uh, I think, recently just, uh, murdered a, a wedding reception um, overseas. So don't make it seem like, uh, like she's out here on your side to provide a fair and imbalance, uh, I guess, between the separation of powers. They're all on the same side. They're all on the same team. It's all, uh, I think they only, they only complain about it when it's, slightly hinders whatever it is they want to do. Yeah. Oh, then they notice, oh man, this is terrible. Oh, I can't do, it's slightly harder. I have to push more buttons to do my job. Oh no. Yeah. I mean, in the meantime, the rest of the population isn't a surveillance state. It's a distraction make you think that they're still out there to save you and protect you and be on your side. So although Republicans on the committee initially voted in favor of launching the investigation, GOP members abandoned the effort after it began. 
And so far, none has voted to endorse it. Which is very funny. So you find all these uh, Republicans at the beginning are like, "Yeah, we need a, we need a, we need to have an oversight committee. We have to check out what's what the CIA are doing." Uh, you know, a lot of this stuff sounds very repugnant, uh, disgraceful in the way that first in the terms of waterboarding, boarding. Um, so, but of course, you find out later that they they stop supporting it afterwards. So the very same thing that they were in favor of, they kind of you know like go like, "Why would why would you do that?" Right? And unless of course maybe there are some pressure points being applied by the CIA on these people um, that they just kind of conveniently backed off. Asked if he would resign if the CIA was found to be in the wrong, Brennan said he would let the president decide his fate. <laughs> if I did something wrong, I look it to the president. The CIA director said he is the one who can ask me to stay or to go. Yeah, the president, of course, who authorizes many of the drone strikes. So, uh, again, they're in cahoots. Um, and, of course, you look at, uh, you know, even if he does something wrong and, you know, he'll still get another really, you know, cushy job within the political system. You know, so again, it's all nepotism. It's all uh, connected. And who you know, which sociopaths you know. So it doesn't really matter. All this is just a distraction. Just to make you feel, that, again, that they're on your side and trying to provide something good. For the most part, they just hope that something bigger will come along the way in order to cover the fact that this ever happened and then you just forget. So working in, I've worked in the, gov in the public sector before. In the government sector and there is this very legitimate unspoken rule but very legitimate practice of what they call covering your ass mm -hmm. and what you do is if you messed up you there's a procedure of what you're supposed to do and you do that procedure you document your things you make people wait if they need results but they can't get them and then you you give it to your boss who then realizes that this is a problem and gives it to his boss. Essentially, you cover your ass by providing by providing details and just going up the authority chain. Eventually, you go up to the high you go up to the highest point, and the blame is shifted to no one because you're at the top of the chain. What are you gonna do? Fire the guy who's in charge of everything? Nope. Yeah. And that that's literally what this is. He's saying the president gets to make the decision if I stay or go. Okay, so. Let's say, let's say he said, uh, you know, you did something wrong and they let you go. Are you going to be punished? No. The blame at that moment now lies with the commander in chief, with the president. And what are they going to do? Yeah, nothing. Yeah, Nuremberg defense again. So, you know, hey, I'm just following orders. Um, so you do a lot of work yourself, and uh, I guess in terms of protecting yourself from such surveillances, I would imagine. Um, do you have any, I guess, uh, prescriptions in how to perhaps prevent yourself from having, I guess, these invasive approaches in your life? So we have to recognize, and I guess this expands now more towards uh, what's been going a lot around a lot towards the NSA surveillance, data surveillance, and even people worrying about Google or Yahoo and all these data mining search uh, search engines that have all your data. What's important to realize here is this trend of trying to predict, of trying to know what you're doing, who you are, what you are, just by looking at what you're saying, is a way of trying to make the things you create, the things you give out, master, make that a master over you, which is the complete opposite of what computation should be. Computers and data should do the bidding of the user, not make the, us not make the user a slave. Hmm. But what we're finding more and more uh, with large, with large data, data heavy and data computational corporations and with e-governance, which is what Uncle Sam is trying to do by uploading himself into the internet, uh, is to make slaves out of users. Especially, especially everyone who's connected to the network, either through your phone, uh, or through, or through just being around places that are connected to the network. Uh, this would include facial recognition type kind of yeah. things, like the city of Chicago. There's cameras going up everywhere, and they're using facial recognition software just in mass. So, so what do you do to protect yourself from such uh, intrusive devices to ensure your privacy? So. One thing you can do if, and this is probably the most effective, and it might be a bit, uh, it might be a bit funny, <laughs> is you, if you want to, you can straight up lie about who you are on the internet. Now, some people do this on Facebook to hilarious results. 
you'll have troll accounts. But that might, but that's not what everybody's looking for. So people want to represent themselves as they are, who they are on the internet. In that case, I will tell you, they have some common sense. Don't put, don't put that you have all of these weapons, or you know how to do this, or do that or the other. Be discreet about it. Yeah. yeah. Don't be an idiot on the internet. I know that's hard for a lot of people, but I would implore you to not do that. Right. Uh, and how, I guess in regards to facial recognition stuff, I guess how do you... Uh, uh, so, now, so now we're getting more into the nitty gritty, the more technical details of where... Like if you're walking around out there, for example, going to a sports stadium or walking around your own city, and there's of course all these cameras around, like in the UK and London, cameras everywhere, all over the place, every intersection pretty much. Uh, and here in Richmond, they're starting to put them up in many areas as well, hidden ones, uh, CCTV cameras. And so, but there are tricks or interesting ways to prevent yourself from being, uh, I guess, detected by those cameras. So, the, my favorite way, or my, the way that I'm currently exploring now, is actually a pretty easy, an easy fix. What you do, most cameras, most digital devices, like this camera here, can detect uh, more, more visible spectra than we can. We can only go from red light to uh, violet light. Cameras can also see infrared. And what you can do is you can put up infrared LEDs. You can buy them at Radio Shack. I bought four of them today. They're $2.50 each. Will you bring one, I guess, a demonstration next time? I actually, I actually tried hooking them up, and I ended up uh, blowing them out. But, <laughs> <laughs> but with, with, a little, with a little bit, like five extra minutes of more, uh, figuring out how to, split, yeah. how to split the power and the current, um, what you'll essentially end up with is if you put them on your clothing, they'll light up. You'll light up in front of cameras, especially cameras that are designed to function at night. Because in low light environments, cameras use infrared to be able to see clearly. Like the predator. Night. If you put inf if you put infrared lights on a hat that, or on a hoodie, your face, they can't see your face. It's completely lit up and the facial recognition software won't work. So that's one way to do that. And that's how, to, that's how to protect yourself publicly. On the internet or on your machine, if you're worried about someone stealing your data, looking at your data, I would very much recommend using Tor. Might be a bit slow, but that's what we have right now. There's another prototype coming out using the L2P encryption method uh, and communication methods between routers, uh, but I don't know what status it is right now. Cool. All right, nice. Krieger will be with us uh, for quite some time to come. So, of course, if you have any uh, more questions about how to provide uh, security and, um, I guess, to ensure your privacy, we'll be more than happy to answer those questions as well. And so, what do you think? Good wrap? Yeah. Yeah? Good All one. right, great. Awesome. All right, my name is Kamal Lane, signing off. And I'm Krieger. See you later. Take good care. See you guys at the victory party.